Well, do I have a value-packed video for you guys here today. If you're anything like me, you love a great deal. You love discounts. You love getting things for cheap, right? It's always that store that's like 70% off that gets us in there, and at least, at least we're looking, seeing if we can find a good deal. If we can't, we go ahead and walk out. I love deals. I love to negotiate. Let's say I was looking at a new like real estate investment property or something like that, that I was, I was like, ah, I want to make some cash flows from that. I think I'll appreciate over time. I think we'll do really good. I don't go in with full price. I would go in with like maybe 30,000 off or 40,000 off or something like that and try to come up to a price. I, I want a discount, man. I don't want to pay full price for anything. I mean, if I go to McDonald's, I say, give me a Big Mac for 99 cents, please, sir. Guy behind the counter says, uh, sir, Big Macs are $4.99. That is when I go ahead and I pull out my sword. The guy behind the counter says, oh, sir, you can have a Big Mac for free. And I say, thank you. Next thing you know, I have to eat the Big Mac in jail. I don't know what's going on. But anyways, guys, I love deals. I love things for discounts. I know you guys do too. And so why should we pay full price for stocks? Why should stocks be any different? I want deals. You want deals. We want things for cheap beef because that's how we make the money. I just came up with that song on the fly, okay? So in this video here today, I'm gonna teach you how I always get massive discounts on stocks and you can too. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video as always. If you don't mind, smash the thumbs up button. It helps out the YouTube channel massively. It lets me know you appreciate a video like this that is gonna be value packed. Also, are you subscribed? Do you have notifications on? All those good things. If you wanna know the exact stocks I hold, check out first link in the description down there, okay? So let's go stock by stock in real life. I'm going to take you through real life examples. I'm not just going to give you some like, oh, do this, do that, okay? We're going to go through actual real life examples where I've executed essentially getting stocks for very cheap. And I want to kind of show you guys, and there's like a long list of stocks I could give you. We're going to go through four because they're four from very different industries, sectors, companies doing things, and things these companies had going. That way you can learn this way. I feel like real life examples just are so much more powerful than just saying, do this, do that, something like that, okay? So let's start going through a few examples here. First one I wanna go through here is Elf Beauty and Elf Cosmetics. This is a stock we're up 190% on right now. Cost base of $7.28 and the stock's $21 plus, okay? Never mind that. We've taken a ridiculous amount of profits in this stock in the past, okay? $1,000, $279, $102, $406, $1,200, and the list goes on and on and on when it comes to Elf Beauty, okay? Now, how did I get this stock for such a massive discount? Well, Elf Beauty, I remember when they went public back in 2016. My wife actually brought it up to me. And not just that, I remember they covered it on CNBC and things like that, and the, the, the stock went up like crazy on its IPO. When I looked into the company, I actually liked the company. I just, it was an overvalued stock. There's no other way to put it. It was overvalued for where that company was at and where that company was going over the next couple years, in my personal opinion, back in 2016. So I never bought in. I was like, hey, I, I like, actually like the company. I like the vision, but it's just, it's an overvalued stock. I'm not going to buy it, okay? That was until about February of 2019. And I tracked this stock for years and years and years. As they were public and I kind of watched the stock continue to downtrend and the valuation get more and more interesting until finally it reached what I thought was a really, really compelling price. And I said, I gotta go ahead and pounce on this. And never mind that, I had watched essentially like huge creators like Jeffree Star and others making videos about Elf Cosmetics products that were getting, you know, like 5 million views, 10 million views. And I said, okay, there's something going on here with this company, a massive turnaround, and the stock's about as cheap as it's ever been. I gotta go ahead and take advantage of this opportunity because this is about to be a stock that is gonna go up massively. And what has this stock done? Obviously, it has gone up massively since that time. It dipped with all stocks back in the March period, but you know, other than that period, I mean, it's pretty much been up in almost a straight line because the stock was just a phenomenal deal. And I watched this stock. I kept it on a watch list for years and years, I practiced patience with this stock, kept an eye on it, uh, you know, not a close eye like I'm watching a stock every day, but maybe check in with it every few months or something like that. And it was like, it was, this was a maybe someday stock. Kept it on a watch list, I exercised patience in this whole scenario, and through keeping an eye on it and through exercising patience, it ended up paying off absolutely massively for me, okay? Remember, people were selling me Elf stock for $7 
$8, $9 a share. People were actually selling me their shares for that price. I mean, you think back now and it's like, that's absolutely ridiculous. If anything, they should have been doing the opposite, right? I mean, you think about it, Warren Buffett has a great saying. He says, the stock market is a device for transferring money from the impatient to the patient. It's a great saying and it's one of my favorite in the stock market. Those elf sellers should have been buying the stock, not selling the stock. The stock was in a turnaround mode. The stock was at pretty much an all-time low. Just because the stock's at an all-time low or right around an all-time low doesn't mean you sell the stock. You look at what's going on with the fundamentals and those folks should have been buying shares for seven, eight, nine dollars a share instead of selling me those, those shares for so cheap. It was just ridiculous. They were selling a very good asset that was in total turnaround mode for you know pennies on the dollar. Let's just put it that way. And hey, I must say, I do appreciate those folks for selling me those shares, okay? Let's talk about one from this year, a 2020 buy, Fizzy Get Dizzy. So this is one we're now up 90% on, over 90%, up $35,000 in the public account on this particular stock, and we actually own some in another private account, in which we're up quite substantially as well, cost base of $40.42. So in terms of fizzy get dizzy, I remember the stock actually being mentioned to me, it was either through an email or like a DM, somebody in my private stock group actually sent me. And they were like, hey, you know, what do you think about National Beverage Corporation? Do you think it's a buy? Do you, what, what's your opinion on the stock? And this is back when the stock was like 100 something dollars a share. This is like kind of late, 2018 is a hundred plus dollar stock. I looked in the company, they were the number one player in sparkling water because they had this brand called LaCroix. And I liked the company, but the valuation just back then at a hundred something dollars a share, it just was not very compelling for where the company was at at that particular time. So I said, uh, you know, hey, you know, it's, it's a company I like, but the valuation is a no from me. It's not something I'm personally interested in. However, because I like the company, I actually kept it on a watch list and I said, I'll, I'll check in with this one every once in a while. And then if we fast forward to March of this year, drinks are selling like crazy, right? Anything drink related, water related, selling absolutely unbelievable. You go to Sam's Club, Costco, Walmart, anywhere, it's like everything's selling out. And so it gets me to think like, hmm, I wonder who's benefiting from this. I'm thinking about all the different companies. And then I was thinking, oh my gosh, National Beverage Corporation is probably benefiting massively. I mean, absolutely massively from this. Drinks are selling insane, plus it's a great deal. And so I went ahead and I started actually buying this stock. And in the private Discord chat during the month of April, I even added a tab. So whenever members would like go to the grocery store, they'd take pictures of essentially like the LaCroix area and we'd see like, uh, you know, how sell through there. Are they low on product or are they stacked up? Things like that. So we got a really good context from all over the world on how LaCroix products were essentially selling in stores. It was absolutely amazing. The stock was a great deal and I went ahead and I pounced on this one. I bought 700 shares in one of my accounts which were up almost 100% on those ones. It's almost a home run now for us and the public account about 960 shares and we're up over 90% on that stock. I could take 60,000 plus dollars in profits tomorrow on this stock if I want. And I made that in six months, strictly from patience and putting in the work. Patience and putting in the work. Back when it was a hundred something dollars a few years ago, where the company was at at that particular time, it just wasn't a deal. But all of a sudden you give me shares for 40 bucks, Absolutely, that was a very good deal. All it took was patience, the right strategy, and some work ethic, okay? Let's go into this one. It's a semiconductor company, Skywork Solutions. This is a really, really interesting one. It just hit home run status for us very recently, up 100% now on this stock in the public account. Very thankful for great Skywork Solutions, great management team over there. Skywork Solutions was a stock I came across back in like 2013, okay? I knew about this company for a while because I used to be invested in Cirrus Logic back in the day. And a lot of times Cirrus Logic and Skyworks would get talked about a lot in the same sentence because both of them got a significant portion of their revenues and their net income from guess who? Apple, okay? So I kept track of the stock back then when it was like a 20 something dollar stock, 20, 30 dollar stock. But ultimately when it came to Skyworks Solutions, I just couldn't quite grasp it. I couldn't quite get my head around the stock fully back then and exactly what made them special, exactly what their type of growth opportunity was and things like that. And so I never got to get in the stock. I watched the stock go from $20, $30 a share to $100 a share by March of 2015. I mean, the stock absolutely went up like a rocket ship. And I was like, dang, man, they must have had something going on there that was pretty big because I just couldn't get my head around it, okay? So then we fast forward to 2018 
and I relook into Skyworks. And now, it's like five years later, okay, I can finally really grasp around this company and get an idea of this because I saw the stock was faltering. It hadn't done anything in years. I'm looking at the stock and it was like, it was under $100 a share and I'm like, man, many, many years ago, this stock was over $100 a share, so what's going on with this company? And I started really researching it, got a really good understanding, started buying the stock at $80, $70 a share. I mean, look at all the different costs I bought. I even bought all the way up to $95 a share. So it's 95, I bought in the 80s, bought it in the 70s, bought in the 60s. The lowest shares I got were $61.12. Somebody was selling me their Skywork Solutions shares on January 3rd, 2019 for $61.12. Imagine that. We're up 147% now on that position. And what I recognize with Skywork Solutions is one, I could fully understand the company, what makes them special, where they're going, but also, I figured I gotta get in this stock before 5G comes. It's a beaten down stock. They got massive opportunity in the 5G space and I have to get my position fully built out before Apple even you know, comes out with a uh, essentially a 5G iPhone because I knew as soon as Apple comes out with their 5G iPhone, it will be game over. And guess what's gonna be happening next week? Apple will be coming out with likely their 5G iPhone. It's not 100% for sure, but I would say it's probably about 95% sure Apple will be launching a 5G iPhone next week, and the stock has gone up, what, 100% or so since we bought in the position in average, right? So I had to get in before that happened, and so what ended up happening here? I exercised patience, I didn't rush into a stock I didn't know anything about just because it was going up a bunch, that would have been a very poor decision, right? Imagine I'm watching that stock and it goes to 70, 80, 90 dollars a share, and I start buying in way back in like, you know, 2014, 2015, and then I'm holding that stock for years because I never even really fully understood it and it doesn't do anything for years and years and years that's just a you know that's just a not a good return on investment let's put it that way okay so I exercise patience I exercise understanding make sure I fully understood the company and I exercise urgency I didn't say oh let's wait until a 5g iPhone comes out because that's when the numbers will start hitting no that's not how you do this okay if you wait until a 5g iPhone comes out Guess what? Everybody's already going to be in this stock by that point in time, or a lot of people are going to be in this stock. There's going to be a late people to the game then at that point. I always have to beat Wall Street to the next deal. I always have to do it. If I can't beat Wall Street to the next deal, then I'm not going to get the type of gains I want to get. And for somebody like myself that's trying to get 30% plus a year, I'm not going to get those type of gains unless I always beat Wall Street to the deal. I have to see it before they see it. I have to get in before they get in. Sometimes I might have to get in a year early. That's perfectly fine. Look at Skyworks Solutions. I got in that position, what was it, 2018, 2019. And we haven't even really started seeing uh, basically 5G devices come out till in, in mass at least until this year in 2020. I got in a year to two early because I understood, man, once these devices is already start hitting the market. The stock's already going to have moved huge. Wall Street's going to have poured money into this position and it's likely going to, you know, be up significantly. So urgency is key. It's a, like a it's like a balancing beam. Imagine you're trying to like balance on a string, you know, one of those people that like walk on the string. It's always like you're trying to balance between urgency and patience. Urgency and patience, okay? Tesla my Tesla. Oh my gosh, okay? Got to mention this one. Okay, this one's our best winner. This one's our best winner, no doubt. 835% gainer on this one. In a matter of just a couple years, we've been in the stock. $285,000 we are up in the public account. Cost basis on a split just a basis of $45.51. Tesla, you want to talk about a, a, the ultimate patience play from me? It is Tesla. I remember Tesla going IPO back in like 2010, okay? I remember the first time I really, really like, like looked in the company fully. I think it was like 2011, okay? I had kept track of this company since the, the beginning of time, let's put it that way, okay? And I watched this company go public and I looked into it back around that time. I said, this company is way too speculative, way too speculative, and there's a very high likelihood that this company will go bankrupt, okay? Elon Musk would tell you the same thing. Yeah, there was a very high probability several times along the way that Tesla was gonna go bankrupt, okay? It's a miracle the company made it through, okay? No doubt about it. So there was no way I was getting involved with the stock back then. But I kept an eye on it because I said, there's something interesting about this company going on. And I watched them come out with the Model S. And I watched that go into production. I watched them come out with the Model 
X and I watched that go into production. And people for the most part really started getting their hands on that one in about 2016. And I remember taking photos of this house here, which by the way, they're still trying to sell it. I don't know if they ever sold it or what, but I found it on Zillow and they're still trying to sell this house, okay? And it's this big, like massive mansion type house. It's like, I don't know, I think it was like 7,000 square feet or something like that, okay? And I remember I was taking photos and I was doing a video for that house. This was like late 2016. And I remember uh, the kids there, you know, rich kids, right? They're talking about how one of the neighbors had got a Model X and they couldn't stop talking about how cool this Model X was. And at that moment, I knew Tesla was a game changing company because in order to impress rich kids, man, you gotta really be doing cool stuff. I also knew AirPods were gonna be a hit because all the kids were asking for AirPods for Christmas, essentially. I overheard that as well. I pay attention to all these little details that other people don't pay attention to that can end up making you more money than you ever dreamed, essentially. And then in 2017, I still didn't get involved with the stock, okay? But then in 2017, I watched the Model 3 event and I watched the pre-order numbers pour in, I mean absolutely pour in for the Model 3. And this is what really started to like make me consider strongly investing in Tesla, the company, okay? So I watched Model 3 come out, I watched those you know, numbers, I watched this go into production in 2018 in terms of really starting to scale production, and I look at the stock, and the stock hadn't done anything for like five years, okay? We're talking like 2013 to 2018, the stock hadn't pretty much done anything, and I watched this company not only not go bankrupt, but reach scale, hire massive amounts of phenomenal employees and get to levels that it looked like they were starting to become like five years plus in front of everybody in the auto industry and as well as you know other places companies going and I said in 2018, 2019, I gotta add, 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 add the stock in different accounts. That's exactly what I did. Eight years, eight years went by. I kept an eye on the stock to finally buy on the cheap. And look at the way it has paid off. That stock has made me many hundreds of thousands of dollars profit I could take today. Never mind if it, the stock continues to roar over the next five to 10 years, what type of gains that can get me, okay? But literally, eight years went by, guys, and I kept an eye on it. That is patience, okay? That is absolute patience. Patience. Now, let me give you an example of one recently this year, an example of a stock that I didn't have enough urgency in. I think this is really important. Let's talk about a stock I didn't have enough urgency in. It's Amazing Zon, okay? I watched Amazing Zon report earnings back in, I think it was March, okay? Somewhere around there. And I remember Amazing Zon went under $1,800 a share. I think it was even under $1,700 a share at its lows. And I'm looking at Amazon back then, and I'm like, that's a really, 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 really good deal for Amazon, in my opinion. For where that company's at, where that company's going over the next five, 10 years, in my opinion, you know, under $1,700 a share is a deal for this stock. But I looked at it and I said, ah, I don't have to buy it today because the market's been going down, maybe it'll go down more and I can get it for even cheaper. And when you start having thoughts like that, you, you, you just realize you just took an L, okay? Whenever you start thinking, well, you know, it's been going down and it could go down more, that's when you take Ls, okay? You need to be judging things, are you getting a really good deal today or not, okay? And if you're getting a really good deal today, based upon all the things you look for in that stock, you need to buy. You don't, you don't just be like, you know, uh, sit on your thumbs and be like, well, it could go down some more tomorrow because it went down today. No. Is it a good deal today? Buy. Is it a, not a good deal today? Stay on the sideline, okay? As simple as that. And I'm looking at that stock and I didn't buy one share in any of my accounts. Not even one share when I knew it was a deal and a half just because, oh, it might go lower. It's ridiculous, okay? I mean, this is amazing, Zon, we're talking about here. There's a difference between Cheap and greed, okay? Cheap is you want a stock for a really good deal. Greed is it's already a really good deal and you're like, well, it might go lower and so I'll wait even longer. Big difference. If you wanna get greedy, be prepared to miss out on countless great gainers in the stock market. You want cheap, then we're talking. So the major takeaway I always want for you guys to take away from this video, and remember this for life, there's a, a balancing between greed and cheap, okay? And urgency and patience. Patience is key. Always really paying attention to these companies, keeping an eye on them, looking into these companies, because the, the work you're putting into a stock today might mean you don't buy that stock today. But the work you put in today, that might make you $100,000 
in a few years from now, okay? It's done it for me countless time and time again. We, I could've went, we could've literally have made this video like six hours long, I could've showed you all the different stocks this has happened with. I just said, let's do four today, let's cover this, I think I'm gonna get across my point. Remember this, guys, the work you put in today can make you more money than you ever dreamed, over the future, okay? Something so key. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. As always, hope you got a lot of value out of it. Smash a thumbs up if you don't mind. That helps out the YouTube channel massively. Let's me know you guys enjoy a value-packed video like this. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, if you wanna know all the stocks I currently hold, check out first link in the description down there. Thank you for watching and have a great day.